Good morning and thank you for joining me Vicky Higgins on Thursday the 13th of April when we're looking at the Jesus 100 book chapter 87 which is based on the scriptures from Matthew's Gospel chapter 24 verses 1 to 14 and verse 28 and that's where we'll start. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked. Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumours of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginnings of the birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. This is the word of the Lord. So here is Jesus in the public and busy Holy Week. And his disciples ask about the buildings, and he's clear, this building will be destroyed. Later in a moment of quiet, the disciples understand that Jesus is Lord and they know that something really big is going to happen. They've been brought up in the Jewish apocalyptic teaching, so they're aware of teaching where the future is revealed. And in this moment of quiet, they ask their master and Lord, what will the future be? What do you see? Jesus, who's already stated that no stone will be left unturned in the, in the temple, talks more about destruction, damage, famine, earthquakes, wars, a dark time. 40 years after Jesus' death, the Jews rebelled and the temple was indeed destroyed. Where Jesus was standing, no stone was left on another. Could it be that Jesus was referring specifically to that event? Robin Gamble shares his view that he thinks that he was. But also that Jesus was looking beyond that at the unfolding of world history, which will reach its most destructive and cruel stages in its own supposedly enlightened times. Robin Gamble references the many evils, the killing fields, Adolf Hitler, Stalin, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, Pol Pot, the Middle East, Bin Laden, ISIS, famine. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Welcome to our world and to the future, so the good news must be proclaimed. So we know there's a collective desire to know what the future holds. The being in the middle, knowing that something is coming, but not what and when, can be hard. Jesus' revelation in these words is clear. There will be a second coming. There is a time when heaven will again reign over this earth. It is worth holding on to. It is the light that sustains us in the dark. For now, we see that we are living in dark times. And Jesus is encouraging us to stay faithful. God will always be here, be with us. God's power is not diminished when we're in dark times. The darkness will not rule forever. 
Robin Gamble talks about us as the in-betweeners. In his words, we are left in a place, a time zone called history, 2,000 years after Jesus' first appearance, with an unknown stretch of time before his second coming. Right now, we are in a post-COVID-19 world of plague, facing the future of environmental self-destruction. We're left somewhere like Narnia, where it is increasingly winter all the time with fewer Christmases on the horizon. Yet we do know that Aslan will return and will bring with him a new springtime. He leaves us with a question for the in-betweeners who have not fallen away. What is the one thing we can do today to make our world a better place? To end with a prayer. Lord Jesus, as we live our lives in these strange and difficult times, may you be with us every day. May we remain faithful to you every day. May we serve our world and make it a better place. Amen.